welcome to the links! In my last video I told you that this one is going to be really special and it was the plan. I wanted to start a fantasy creature series with it, it was my first mail custom and it was a present for my longest friend in life. So a really special project overall. And here is the result. Why am I showing him to you now? Well, the thing is that I'm absolutely not happy with his outcome and that bothers me really much, especially because he's supposed to be a present for my bestie. I know her for over 10 years, so that's half of my life and I was thinking about this doll so much that I wanted him to be extremely nice. I mean, he's not bad, especially for my first male custom, but I know I can do better. <laughs> So I decided to redo him next year when I'm done with all the planned projects for this year. By the time you're watching this video, I will probably be working on this year's Halloween doll, so no time for him right now. It's pretty sad because I have no real video for you now, so I will show you some steps I took on the way making him. Some of you probably wonder why I didn't just make the video the normal way, without crying like a baby now. The thing is that I want to show you things I'm proud of, projects that make me happy. Moreover, I think it's important to see that not everything's working out as planned and it's no shame. I learned a lot with this project and already have ideas for the next try. And the most important thing, I'm excited to try again. I mean look, working on him was a little struggle to be honest. As you can see, I tried to make new joints again, but this time I used epoxy clay instead of polymer clay, as some of you already suggested. And it really worked much better. I even improved the movability of his leg, heck I was so proud. But in the end one of his legs broke again and that got me so frustrated. So I learned that making new joints is still a little too difficult for me and I haven't found the best material yet. Another problem was the head shrinking. I'm not sure if it's because of my aceton or the plastic of the male's head which is a little thicker than the one of the female doll's head but his head didn't shrink as good. I now bought new aceton and I hope next time it will be better. <laughs> I also hope that I will be able to put the head back on the body next time. Because this time I accidentally destroyed the neck hole, so it won't fit anymore. I kind of fixed it with the rubber band though, so not that big of a deal. A thing I'm actually really happy with is his tail, so I will show you the process a little more detailed. I started with a base made of twisted wire as usual. Asian dragons normally have some fur on their tails, so I wanted to incorporate that in my custom too, because he was intended to be an Asian dragon. I was thinking a little while which materials I wanted to use and decided to use yarn, fabric and sequins as scales. The first thing was to make some wefts out of the yarn that I also used for his hair. Well. Wefts is maybe the wrong word, because I didn't brush them, but let them in their raw form. So they basically were just not at yarn strands. <laughs> then I took a piece of fabric and placed the yarn inside of it, so that the knots faced the outside. After that, I folded the fabric in half and secured it with some sewing pins, to be able to just sew along. If you didn't know, I sew everything by hand, because I'm too stupid to work with the old sewing machine I have. <laughs> This means everything takes longer, but I feel like I'm really learning something this way. At least I feel more comfortable now than at the beginning of my sewing journey. In the end, the tail looked like this and I cut off the excess from the knots a little. And then the moment of truth, I turned it and the yarn really stayed in place. Not as evenly spread as I wished, but for my first try I was really proud. And now the last step. I had the brilliant idea of sewing on sequins as scales. I never did this before, so I had no idea how long this would take. Well, long. It takes a long time. But hey, I learned that it's a bit easier if the tail is already stuffed a little, so I placed a little wedding inside. And well, it turned out really good after I figured out how to sew them on. The last step was to brush out the yarn and flatten it, to receive the mane that I wanted on the tail. After that, I trimmed it a little more with an eyebrow razor. And ta-da! A beautiful tail! <laughs> Maybe still a little lumpy, but my concept worked out and that made me really happy. So for my next try, I already have a solid base to improve upon. 
Speaking of sewing, I even made my own patterns for his kimono and it really fits him. So that's another really good point. It just makes me so happy to see improvement in my weakest point, which is sewing. <laughs> And that's a good transition to one of my favorite parts in every customization, the face up. I was really excited to try painting a male doll and experimented a little with a more realistic look. The ones of you who read my description know that I'm always using Mungyu soft pastels, which are pretty cheap but have a good quality for that price. Now my aunt came to me and gave me these new pastels, which are from Rembrandt. It's a pretty high quality brand as far as I know, well anyways, she used them a few times, but decided to not work enough with pastels to keep them. So she asked me if I wanted to try them. And of course I said yes, and they are so good. Even the light colors do work and build up on the plastic. That was probably the best thing to see in this project. I was so impressed that I immediately called her to thank her again. But even though the materials were great, I messed up my first try on his face up and wiped it all off to do it again. Artists, right? Never satisfied with their work. <laughs> Looking at him now, I'm still not happy with his eyes. There's just something off with them that I wasn't able to fix. But that's not a problem because I'm redoing him either way. <laughs> now that you have an impression of this project, you probably realize that I went through many ups and downs with him, sadly ending on a down. He took me a really long time, doing many things twice and catching a really bad cold at the end that made me lay in bed for about a week. So the plan was to upload his video last month, which obviously didn't happen. I'm sorry that you had to wait so long for this, just to have a pretty shortened video. At the beginning I started working on this like a normal video, writing a script and everything, but it just didn't feel right. Now I'm much more satisfied and being honest feels a lot better than faking a success, at least in my opinion. I really hope you still enjoyed watching. I feel relieved and I have more energy now to work on the upcoming projects. It's no shame if you create something you dislike, as long as you never give up doing what you love. I hope this message came through during this video. Have a wonderful day my little lynxes and thank you so so much for your support. See you soon! Cheers!